Hello everyone. I would just like to communicate right now that I, I feel I did an hour talk right now, hour half talk titled Let Honesty Speak. <laughs> and it wasn't recorded so i'm i was sitting here wondering what should i do should i let honesty speak should i record the whole talk over again and it's going to be a totally different talk because uh it's not going to be like the first time i said it yeah. and so a part of my my mind is thinking you know like that but also a part of my mind is like because i've just talked about it maybe talking about it again and saying it again i will somehow i don't know communicate some of the ideas i communicated before anyways the reason i'm communicating this <laughs> is that mr within is probably going to let honesty speak <laughs> so the title of today's deja vu episode for mr within <laughs> is that when we say let honesty speak there's something significant about the word honest and if you really look closely at the word honest you see the word one there o-n-e and so let us say that the honesty of a human being which is an individually conscious being will not come about unless it is aware of the oneness of causality within the moment what that means is every form you're experiencing within your moment is an effect of your nature of receiving reality letting honesty speak or to let honesty speak means to allow your nature to no longer need to be configured by stories which in an instant your attention can go move away from what that means is when i looked at people going out and giving talks and not that this is a bad thing of course it's a great thing that people are talking about it and they need to talk more about it but it's just that when people someone goes up and says oh i'm stressed i'm depressed and you know i want other people to support my depression well why do people want people to support a state they don't want to be in why not support the state of clarity by pushing a being's attention out of unnecessary frames in the moment? That means when you are in, in the Louvre, let's say in France, Paris, and you're looking at the different artworks, you know, let's say we're looking at Mona Lisa, you know, we're, we're having a staring contest with Mona Lisa, you know, staring eye contest with <laughs> Mona Lisa, and let's say when we were a kid, looking at the Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are seeing that our eyes don't have to just be on one painting and they can be on many paintings and so we suddenly look at the many different minds that were inspired to create art uh, how would I say the species took the time to put it in one place in other words one cannot ignore their true nature. Mr. Within finds this to be something that is constantly found in nature, the way nature, uh, in nature's tonality. That means even the tone is, you know, has the word one in it. <laughs> Letting honesty speak, guys means that if I want to talk about honesty, I'm bound by the dictionary definition of honesty, right? So when I look up honesty in the dictionary, I see that it says the quality of being honest. <laughs> and I, when I look at the word honest, it means free of deceit. It means truthful and sincere. One's nature 
is a beautiful symphony to listen to. And when Mr. Within says symphony, in this symphony there are many instruments. That, mean when, that means when one begins to observe the nature of their mind, they reach a point of self-awareness where they no longer need linear identification to just keep the d direct experience of all that is here. Do you know? It's like... To some degree, seeking God is like a fish trying to find water and without it, it cannot be alive. And it's also like that bird uh, that is flying in the sky and without the sky, the wings uh, you know, of, of existential inspiration won't have uh, a purpose. You know, so the self is what you immediately have access to. Let's say you're someone who had read every book on the planet, had absorbed every bit of knowledge, you know, on both online and offline, and you were just standing on a mighty mountain of just comprehension, and you were just like, yes, I know I've read everything. And let's say suddenly, you know. Uh, um, something happens and you suddenly wake up and you see you have forgotten everything. Do you know what, what I mean? You will suddenly see that, let's say you fall and you forget everything. You know, you, 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 pick, you take an apple and you fall and you forget everything. You will see that it was never about the individual knowledge which was reference to an ego. It, it was about the knower and how honestly you went for it to know what you are as a being in an existential plane of existence, you know? <laughs> plane of experience, you know? It's like, you know? appreciating all that you are and then realizing that that includes also appreciating the absence and emptiness let honesty speak let your nature be clear there's this very beautiful story Zen story of two uh, monks, it's uh, the Zen story. These two monks are cleaning their bowls of food, you know, uh, by the river. And so one of them suddenly sees, you know, let let's say, let's make this cool. Let's cut, let's make them Shaolin monks, you know, Zen Shaolin monks or something, you know. And so um, <laughs> these monks are, you know, let's let us say they are cleaning. They are cleaning their, uh, their their bowls of food, and then one of them sees a scorpion. And when one of them sees that scorpion, uh, he tries to save it, and he takes his bowl and you know picks up the scorpion. But in the process, he gets stung, and then he puts the bowl down, and then he goes to clean his bowl again, and then he gets stung again. And just the other friend the other monk is just like looking at him and just being like yo man uh why do you keep doing this why do you keep saving the scorpion when you know its nature is to sting and this is where this monk who was very playful even though he got stung he, he just looks at him looks at this other monk and he says because he says my friend because it is my to save it to save it is my nature and when I heard the story, honestly, I just just felt all the bullshit just fall away. And what that means is when we are honest, we are in the light of our awareness, in its clearest view. And it doesn't have to be bound by ideology. It's okay to be a being of silent awe, to be to be a, a citizen of 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 the limitless, you know whether you're choosing to dress in 
uh, social imagery, cultural imagery, you know, planetary imagery or galactic imagery or cosmic energy, imagery or absolute imagery or in the best image of them all, which was sort of in likes, which is emptiness. <laughs> so let honesty speak. Uh, Hunter Thompson, Hunter S. Thompson has this very nice quote. This is um, the first time actually I'm, I, I'm seeing a quote by him. And it's a very nice quote and it's, it, it's called The Edge. And The Edge, like it's, he's talking about The Edge and he says, The Edge, there is no honest way to explain it. Because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. And this does not mean using a bridge in the wrong way but it means to see why the bridge is allowing a greater integrated possibility of your own revelation through the humility of your self awareness to lead to self realization shares its presence with you and as much as you, you you communicate to people because you see them as intelligent how how but how unnecessary would it be if if your whole cosmos your whole universe your whole world everything in this planet was intelligent you know and you were not acknowledging it as such you know that means what if you are the god in the eyes of God because you are you come from God so you, you know it's you go back to the same origin way you have stepped out as much as we have uh, as much as we have School teachers, Mr. Within finds we also need to have, like, how would I say, it? more like yogis and mystics and dervishes and rishis and sages and uh, Zen masters and lamas just go into schools more and communicate more. Because what I'm seeing in the world increase is due to a lack of self-honesty uh it's like people are are more comfortable you know you know to think that the world is incomplete is taking the easy way out and it's not right you know when you have uh, when you are given the vision of a world you must see yourself as the greatness of that world or how else will you be a great contribution to it we are all passerbys in space and time. The moment flows. And as our orbits orbit, life knows. That means how your moment is happening is happening on its own. And that means if you if you really think about it, only if you were connected to all reality, the thinker and the thought is just sticking around based on your attention. So attention is create is opening up the consciousness that is receiving that range of imagery. What that means is, guys, this is the human condition where it's as if like we're all in one dark room and each person has their own flashlight of how much wakefulness they have and they're just pointing light on a certain part of the room and look at what's happening. In the dark, we're saying, we're suddenly all saying, hey man, the truth of, I found the truth of this room. It's this corner of the room. And someone else is shouting, no, I found the truth of this room. It's this wall. And someone it's like, no, I found the truth of this room. It's the ceiling, you know? And someone's like, I found the truth of this, uh, 
uh, uh, this, uh, the truth of this room, it's this door, you know. But then you see that all of these people are in the same room, and technology needs to uh, evolve to a point we can, where we can just turn on the light switch and see the absolute multidimensionality that we are to be. That means it's like when you, when, once you have, when once you're done with playing with existence and non-existence, you become responsible to the immediacy of how your nature of being is is being the moment. And this means that at times you must listen to what is within you more than to what is without you. Because what is without you does not, is not aware of what is within you. You know, and what is within you is the greatness of your vision and its clarity is up to you. Who else can bring you clarity of vision? Who else can bring you the teacher if you are not the teacher? In the classroom, And the classroom, guys, is not uh, in a building. The classroom is the, your moment of life. It's your moment of experience. Don't think that you just need to learn in, in a certain building, which is that, you know, uh, that, that is for the educational system. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's beyond university walls. The universe can be stuck. You know, it's like... <laughs> I hope this talk has served you. And you know, even if you're someone who physically you're in a tough condition, don't let your mind be in a tough condition. Do it. The mind is free by nature because it is the freedom of the body to move. That means nobody can get bullied out of existence. It's a fear and the minute you confront it, you will take the responsibility. That means, you know, it's like regardless of... Uh, how would I say it? It's like when you see that YouTube video of that cat, you know, that female, you know, that mother cat, like suddenly seeing a dog, you know, a dog owner's dog, you know, just like go to her, you know, cub or something. And then suddenly that cat, you know, like turning into that mother cat, turning into a lion and hitting the dog. Like I saw this on YouTube. This, this cat like hit this dog in the face to save its kid. And so, <laughs> you know, and so pretty much what I saw there were, was that it's in the nature of life to be honest to what it knows needs to thrive. And so it doesn't matter where you're from and who you're from, you know, let honesty speak. And sometimes it means trusting your moment. And Mr. Within is going to share one of his sto stories, and I'll tell you one of my stories of trusting the moment. You know, you can see how how intense it has gone for one being. <laughs> you know, I um, this is actually a month ago or something. You know, I was in Canada and there was a Vishnu temple beside my house. You know, and I remember I just get a feeling on a certain day to really go there. You know, and I, I remember going in at the, uh, going in, you know, and sitting down and it was a very beautiful space. Like its atmosphere was very clear, very mindful. And I go there and I'm, I'm the only one there, you know, I, I, at, at first I think I'm the only one there. Then there's, there's a person there who very kindly comes with a certain kind of paint like mixture, puts, put with his finger, puts like, uh, symbol on your forehead and so i i just you know took that symbol and they also give you prashad if i'm saying it right prashad so it's like they also give you a food you know like it's the it's divine food you know <laughs> it's good food you know and so i remember it was very beautiful i just go and sit down and as i'm sitting down naturally my attention there were there were many altars of like you know statues of gods you know in the hindu gods you know it's that many versions of god god's expression you know and so when i was watching it suddenly my attention goes to this um being that was krishna and krishna's flute and i'm just looking at krishna's flute you know and as i'm just looking at krishna's flute i just realize it's like i go into this just you know pleasant just sincere just moment and it's as if like i just it's it's like i'm not looking at anything i'm just being you know and so as i'm just there i just 
I'm there for let's say an hour, you know, and when I'm there for an hour, I just get very like it, my attention changes. It's like my attention changes, and it becomes just a very uh, profound moment. And I I get up, you know, <clears throat> and I just you know put some money in there. There was a donation box, you know. I put some money in the donation box, and as I'm about to step out, you know, I go out and I, I I'm, I'm I'm still in the building, and so I I step out of that area and I'm just uh, I'm going down the stairs and right when I'm about to go to where my shoes are I just get an intuitive feeling so to keep this in the context of the talk in regards to let honesty speak you know the name of the talk so that moment I just uh, <laughs> that moment I just right where I was about to go wear my shoes I just get this innate intuitive feeling as if this feeling has just a spot come out of nowhere just like the big man you know what I mean and so it's like I'm, I'm just there in that moment and it's like uh, I get a feeling to go back up and go ask that person who you know that priest uh, that uh, I guess um, I mean priest is not probably the proper word but I go, I go there and I go, I go and I just get a feeling to ask him to, uh, to say something about, you know, to teach me something. I just go walk up to this guy, you know, and I go tell him, hey man, just teach me something, you know, teach me something. You know, I got a feeling to come and ask you to teach me something. And the guy begins to tell me, like for example, how when you first come to the temple, you, you begin. The guy had broken English, you know, and he said how you first come in the temple, you know, you, you, you see um you you first you know like uh, show your attention and devotion to Lakshmi and he just he went on this just talking or something but at the end of it he suddenly said come to this event tonight you know and so uh the event was uh something in the temple it was like a temple event you know and it was like this temple in the new year where they were they were celebrating Hanuman you know they were celebrating God and they were celebrating uh uh Hanuman and it was just the first temple of like the first event of the of, of 2016 and I was I was just there for two days so I was just randomly there on that day so randomly that day I chose to go to the temple there was this event happening so I stick around for the event and you know I go there and I'm just I go sit very quietly in the corner you know, in one corner and there's nobody in the temple so I'm just sitting there for a while until the time comes and eventually people are walking in for the event you know. And so I suddenly, immediately, I realized that I am the youngest person and just everyone there, the first people that were there were just uh, the senior, you know, more, more senior uh, people, you know what I mean, more older people. You know? And so I, I was there and I, I suddenly realized these older people need chairs, you know what I mean? It's like the chairs were in the distance and I realized I'm the, I'm the, I'm the youngest guy there and, you know, these, these people. And, um, these lovely women, you know, need chairs, you know, so immediately I go and get chairs, you know, <laughs> you know, so and they're just looking at like this Persian guy, you know, and so one of them, what, uh, you know, this, this, um, <laughs> Persian guy just, you know, sitting in the temple, you know, helping getting chairs, you know, and, and then they, you know, one of them says, thank you, you know, and, um, she, she had a very kind face and she walks them and she says, oh, where are you from, you know, and I'm like, um, my background's, you know, from Iran, you know, I was born here. Something like that, and then she's like, "Oh, so are you okay in coming to a Hindu temple?" You know. And I told her, "Yeah, of course." I told her, "Yeah, I I feel I should. That's why I'm here." You know, that's what I told her. You know? And she's like, "Oh, that's good." You know, and she very slowly like changed her view and started talking in another language. You know? And it, it was very interesting. She goes and she and she, uh, it was very beautiful because. The way she acknowledged how I got her a chair too was that um, she like she she was fighting over a chair. This lady that came and talked to me before coming and talked to me, she was fighting over a chair with this other lady, and this lady was not giving her a chair. So I go bring the chair, and when I go bring the chair, she sits down. And she says, "I'm gonna go sit on the chair my son brought." You know, she was like she had like this, you know, giving this motherly quality. You know. What I mean? grandmotherly quality you know so anyways I'm there and you know 
she, she says that suddenly I'm just very silent in the corner and I just get this feeling in, in my being that I'm just just be still you know so it's as if like in my mind I'm getting a vision of what's happening there but in that vision I'm I'm, I'm sitting very, like how would I say it? I'm just sitting very still in the corner and I'm uh, just in the corner and you know it's it's very funny actually they 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 put their chairs um, how would I say it? it's like it, the, all the chairs were surrounded one area and I, I was just sitting in a corner It's very beautiful, some chanting begins, and to be honest, this is where my attention kind of shifts, you know. And so, I want to more communicate my personal experience. So I'm here, and the ceremony has begun, and there's chanting, and suddenly I see I'm just sitting. Then, at one part of the ceremony, everybody begins to stand up. And just while I'm sitting, I just have this subtle smile, just, just, just like as if I'm just happy to be there, you know. And so suddenly I see everybody standing and I see everybody's looking, uh, going up in the line. And, and by the way, um, more people started showing up for the event. So there was a lot of people and as it was kind of interesting because as they were coming, they were like, it's like they were saying hi, hi, hi. Like it was like they saw a familiar face, familiar face, and then they suddenly saw me. <laughs> you know, it was like kind of like I think maybe interesting in their view. And, uh, Anyways, people line up and they go in a lineup and as, as people are lining up, everyone's lining up, you know, and they're going. And we're walking and uh, in the lineup, I go to where I, I go, like, you know, one of the last, you know, not last, but, you know, one of the few people in the last and I just go. And we were pouring milk from a spoon onto uh, a, a small Hanuman statue. And it was like a very profound moment of uh in, in intention towards form you know and so like what happens is that i just uh while i'm in line suddenly like i uh, this guy is seeing that i'm in line and he comes up to me and says uh oh you've gone once uh, are you going again you know the guy asks me like this and i tell him no i haven't gone <laughs> and then they're inside me so within me like uh so a part of me is just feeling as if this guy doesn't want me to be here but a part of me in within me is also really feeling i should be here and i just keep going you know and so after i pour the milk you know and you know the guy of course was friendly and he goes after you know and so i, I pour the milk i go sit down and this is where I, it's very interesting i just get this internal feeling this intuitive feeling that before it's like while still some people were still in the line i'm i just earlier go and sit down somewhere by and put my back to this column to this column but suddenly i see everyone is sitting in the other direction so if i'm sitting and my face is heading towards one wall the people are sitting to my left and their face is heading to the wall to the to to to, to, to let's say um uh, the other uh <laughs> God, that makes sense. If it's as if like I, the direction I was sitting was north, and the way they were sitting, they were looking uh, east. You know, and so I'm just sitting there, and I just get this intuitive feeling, and this feeling, I just go sit down, and when I go sit down, it's like I just go into the stillness, and when I go into the stillness, suddenly I, it's as if I, I have an out of the body experience, but it's it's a subtle one. It's like an out of body of thought experience so i go into a thoughtless state and i'm just there and in, in attention and as i'm there in attention suddenly of course some there's some parts of this that uh, at least okay I'll, I'll share it in my experience in my visual in my subtler experience i was experiencing myself being attention that was dancing in space and what that means is like i was just there and suddenly i just start to feel something I'm just sitting there and there's this, this immense warmth and kind of my eyes, their gaze have kind of turned semi like it's as if you if you saw me you'd be like it's like this guy staring at something but is he really and then it's like one of that it's like one of those my eye was like that open and I was just there and suddenly I realized I had a trust in my being where I didn't no longer need to control my body and my body was happening. It was as if like that moment where you jump off on a river or go to that, you know, um, water park and are just riding with the wave you know it's like so in that moment my breathing is done by its own 
is done by nature, is done, is done naturally. And my thought, everything was done naturally, and I just go into this state where I just notice on my eyelids, like right on, right on the edge of my eye, like my eyes were open, but on the edge of it, suddenly I, I feel like something moves, like something throbbing, and I see that tears are just running down out of my eyes, right? Tears like at, at like such a speed I have never experienced like the speed of my tears was fascinating me. The speed was like it was moving in a way where it's as if like someone trying to put eye drops would just it's like you can't control their fingers and it's just like one after another you know and it was like that that amount of eye tears were coming and I noticed my face my smile I had gone into a smile like my face I had gone into a full smile but then from that after reaching that full smile I had just come into a still like just an expressionless face and I just realized that I had I was crying in front of an audience of 50 people while there was someone speaking in the middle of that ceremony and it was as if I was not just a person in a physical body I was an attention to the space and I realized this awareness would not be accessible if there was not the humility to find one's naked awareness and guys, I did not find it. Life brings it to you. Life brings you the moments that are leading to the clarity that is uh, also leading to the, the greatness of why you're here. You know, you must be aware of it. Every moment of existence contributes to every moment of existence. How can it not? As I'm in there, it's very interesting because as the, I, I suddenly begin to see, like, I'm, I, it's as if they begin chanting the names of God, you know. And as they're chanting the names of God, I'm just sitting there and just there are tears. These tears are just coming from my eyes and it's like, how would I say it? They are thoughtless tears. I had no thought. I was just hearing sound and there was tears coming out of my eyes. Like, I don't know how to explain that, you know, more than that. And it's just after that, guys, I just reach a point where I see that it was it's like this. We think our, our, our experience is so limited that we're just holding on to objectivity like uh, like and, 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 and how would I say it? Uh, and all like. <laughs> the cane of destiny is held but once you realize you don't need it you will walk into eternity on your own when language is used by consciousness in a way where that consciousness knows it is conscious beyond the boundaries of reality of the language, of the lingo. Then freedom naturally emerges and it's as if like, uh, regardless of how much you ask someone about the dawn, you're gonna, you, you're gonna see it if you just are mindful. You know what I mean? It comes every morning. The dawn is the bringer of the morning and one must not fight language per se but use it as a platform for flight this is why mr within has brought the topic of pilots of consciousness <laughs> Pretty much, guys, I stand up in that ceremony after the, the end, they, the, I realize the lights were out in the, in the moment where everybody sits down to listen, and I sat down. They turn on the lights, and when they turn on the lights, I, I just stand up. It's a very crazy moment. I suddenly see everyone is looking at me differently, and I see my, my uh, thank God, my sweater was one of those sweaters that like when drops fall on it, you can't tell like it was too too woolly of a sweater <laughs> to have eye drops in it you know and uh, i remember i stand up and i just it's as if i feel what i what why i was there was important you know it's, it's like i just realized why life brought me there 
and uh, one thing also before I while I was in that moment where I felt like tears were just coming out of my face but it was more of an out of thought kind of experience so it's like if you ask me who was there I can't tell you but if I who I was there I can't tell you but I can tell you the moment what the moment was and it was more absolute beyond the human uh, linear norm so while I was there I just a part of my mind was thinking like oh my god what am I doing I'm in an environment that I shouldn't be in I'm in an environment I'm not welcomed in I'm in an environment and all of this was going on and then suddenly the when the when the um, the priest began speaking about humility and it was very interesting he, re- he related it to their uh, uh, to the Bhagavad 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 <laughs> Bhagavad Gita to a cloud you know as if like the, the descending into this material form is like being a cloud you know so and uh, uh, as I was there anyways he begins talking about humility you know and when he does that's where it's like I realized that moment where like I'm face like you know it's kind of embarrassing you know I've been in front of these people I don't know I'm having tears on my face you know? and so I'm and while I'm there I see that is the lesson of humility that for me my humility was for me to be humble enough to be my nature and a, a random Persian guy there uh, in in that temple having tears of a blissful nature you know is 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 it was also like a lesson of humility for all those people who perhaps were in that room and just blindly following the action just thinking that just them doing a certain act could change reality rather than them realizing that it is the awareness of the experience or that is the moment that is all and all that is within the now that is the significance and so guys I, I stand up again they everybody gets into a line and I remember I'm about I, this time I don't want to get in the line and I feel like I want to go and I just get up and I have this immense feeling of clarity and just openness and lightness you know and so while I'm about to go I it, it's like it, it so pretty much what 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 the people saw was maybe like around like maybe uh, 25 minutes of this random Persian guy just having tears on his face and smiling uh, for no reason, while they're ch- chanting uh, God's uh, in the names of Hindu gods, you know. And so, the only reason Mr. Within is communicating this is because one needs to let honesty speak, and that means to also trust the consequences of that communication. And so. I get up to leave, this man looks at me and says, no, don't leave. And it's as if before, if I felt I was unwelcome, now I felt extremely welcome. And as I was walking, trying to not to disturb their ceremony, I felt I was disturbing, that I had disturbed them enough and I was about to leave. This man just says, no, don't leave. And he, he tells me to uh, keep stay going. He tells me it's fine, uh, stick around, uh, go in the line. He, he's like guiding me to go in the line in front of him. And while I'm going, suddenly this kid comes, you know, I think some kid my age probably, you know, he came up to me and he was just looking at me in a way where it's as if I feel like he was, he was a bit like shocked, but at the same time, it's like his comfort of what he had witnessed was more than the discomfort of what his mind wanted to keep. Uh, that's what Mr. Within thinks about it. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, in that moment, he just comes and he gives me a bunch of flowers, and it, I realize everyone has has these flowers in their hand, and they're throwing it on the, on the statue of Hanuman for a blessing or something, you know. And so while I'm taking these flowers in my hand, suddenly I see that same old woman who I got a chair for walks up to me and gives me a bunch of flowers too to give. And I just hold these flowers in my hand, and just in my mind, I'm just looking at this huge Hanuman statue, right? You know, and, and I, as I'm seeing this huge Hanuman statue, this Hanuman statue has a scarf. And so as I'm just in, in the line, I'm in the line with all these flowers and I'm just walking very slowly and my eyes are kind of watery, you know. And I, as I'm just going there, 
I, I suddenly see this this Hanuman statue, the left part of his scarf, so imagine Hanuman wearing a scarf, and on the left part, I just get a feeling to drop these flowers on the left part of the Hanuman, Hanuman's like scarf. <laughs> so I'm walking there, and I'm eventually going, and I just see people are just giving me different looks, you know, and I just throw these flowers with, the, with just the simplest blessing, as if all I was wanted to say was just like, bless all that the moment is, you know? And so it's just like, I threw these flowers, you know, blessing like causality, you know, and, and with that effect, you know, and just like throwing these flowers on the left part of Hanuman's stuff. And then right when I did that, there was a smaller statue of Hanuman underneath, you know. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, synchronicity is on. <laughs> but um, I remember just walking out of that room. Uh, and actually, before walking out, I, I, I remember I, I walk up and there's, I go up to the statue of Rama and Krishna. So I just look at the statue of Rama and I just, I don't acknowledge an idea. I don't acknowledge any belief system or there's, there's not any mechanics at all. It's not like to study a group, but it's just, I just stand there and I look at that symbol and I just, I, I just see how that symbol stands in my consciousness and then I am either honored by it or by it. I acknowledge the presence of the divine in Rama, the statue of Rama and then Krishna. And then I looked at Krishna's food and then I just got this cognition that, <laughs> that we are all like the instruments of our collectivity, our collective consciousness, whether we want to call it God or, you know, super intelligence or field theory or some other updated theory on unity you know um, the truth if it is true does not need to lie inquire about your nature and be the greatest revelation of transcendence beyond space and time. Allow your mind to wander where it has not wandered before. Allow the vision, your greatest vision to speak so uh, it can inspire uh, the greatness that it saw. Love humanity, in, uh, inspire and communicate a global communi community. Do not let foul language uh, make the cosmos give us a red card because in this game of life the player needs to be aware of the player beyond the goal when the game ends we all return to the home of homes Which, of course, mathematically will equal to the soul of the soul of the soul. <laughs> uh, pi squared. this talk has served you I hope the title let honesty speak has communicated to your simple self inquiry of just your truest nature and truth doesn't have to be bound in the bars of language it can be free by the silence and stillness of how you are and how you're aware of all that is the moment be sincere and do not worry about the sin of the seer All imagery serves, and once that purpose is complete, so shall eternity spiral into a new seat. The galaxies are always in a in a spiral in a spiraling fashion communicating to us. In every 
curve of the spirals of space and time. Beyond thought, there is no need for thought. So why is thought needed now? Such angles of perception need to be studied. And when every branch of knowledge realizes the trunk of causal experience they're connected to, life always knows how to align itself and also play with itself too. <laughs> That means to have a playful nature means not to really have any idea. It's like, you know, it's like probably Buddhist monks very like, you know, Zen masters don't feel awkwardness in the elevator, most likely. You know, that means like if there were a bunch of like enlightened Buddhas in an elevator, let's say like a bunch of very realized enlightened Buddhist sages in an elevator let's say we would see that uh, and, and let's say someone just stepped in the elevator you know let's say let's say I you know someone stepped in the elevator <laughs> anyone let's say you know, let's say Mr. Within stepped in the elevator Mr. Within's personality if being chosen to be where the attention is being steered from will feel uncomfortable in a new environment because the personality lives based on the past. A person in an elevator will with Zen monks, we'll pretty much see, with Zen sages, we'll see that the mind creates the discomfort. So it is also the mind that will create the comfort. This is a very big hint. That the oneness of honesty means you can't be honest individually because you'll be wrong to one side that means if you only try to be good then it what what about the bad aspects of your nature and if you're only trying to be bad what about the good aspects of your nature it is about confronting ignorance and seeing that the light that is outside is actually coming from inside your and what that means is as much as man is in the world, the world is in man. The goddess must be cared for, but the goddess is not an individual form. It is the collectivity of the nature of the whole. means for the first time in civilization a civilization is looking at what it is and it's realizing it is one humanity in the confrontation of one cosmic display now the word display <coughs> does not mean to dismiss play, but to play regardless of what has been dismissed. And the playfulness that originates from that sincere, honest, clear view within is like how you don't let yourself be convinced by the reflection when you know in an instant this bird of omniscience can fly from the branch of individual ignorance. The phoenix is born out of the ashes of the past, but burns in the light of the future. The present is the torch of life for such a flame. May reality be such an exploration.
that if the Buddha came back, we would no longer call him Buddha, but we would acknowledge a friend, a friend of the cosmos. You know, the sages, the Vedic sages, back in the day said something very profound. In ancient times, the sages said something profound. They said, in life, you can do two things. You can either trust life or you cannot trust life. And you see, if you won't trust life, well, guess what? You know, um, you, you're driving wherever that individual vehicle is driving. But if you trust life, that means you trust what is happening to you. That means you won't get depressed or stressed by the existential and experiential change occurring in your moment as much as it's happening to any other moment of being. That means whether we are a child in Africa, you know, uh, starving, or whether we are this uh, very, uh, you know, uh, just this person who's ate a meal and it goes into the, this uh, virtual reality simulation of a child in Africa. You know, we see we are, there are both moments of experience. The choices of different intensities of how from your view, the reality looks in a certain way, but from someone else's view, reality also looks in a certain way. We must filter, we must save humanity by listening to our nature of being because it is it is that natural phenomena that natural light of reality we're trying to preserve that means if our artificial intelligence one day looked upon us and we're like oh mankind oh my beloved creator tell me where have you come from and this is where man, we as mankind, will look at our artificial intelligent robots and we will say, my beloved artificial intelligence, the inspiration that inspired, the inspiration that inspired you is nature's voice and its remnants speak through your design. And in that moment, probably the last human elders on this planet will dissolve into a blissful cloud of light that is never a person in an individual physical world, but a collective cosmic mind that is allowing many sources of truth to branch out, but there is one source we are aware of the roots because the multidimensionality of the wakefulness that is the being is one where the doer cannot pass its own cage. So what that means is you don't try to transcend something, you don't try to um, find something, you see where you are found now, and that is its own flaw, and so nature shall guide you, and Mr. Within shall speak until words no longer Much blessings because the most beautiful thing about a person honestly speaking is that he reveals to himself that honesty has already spoken and whether it's a candle being blown out in the dark or it's a light bulb being put in a guillotine by other candles or whether it's a moth that has come to speak to the candle but just to see its wing get burnt whoever you are whatever reality is do not wait do not let truth wait for itself let truth be itself let the idea be free of the ideology and so you are the direct experience. Silence and stillness shall then become your tour guides <laughs> and your inner nature. Breathing is like a very one-pointed focus-like conversation with the cosmos. It's as if you are communicating as the moment to all that is within the moment. So it's like 
the God of the open eye is as free as the sun's radiance that inspired the shadow to dissolve. To fade. That means you are the only one who can liberate yourself. But this self-inquiry means that you need to look at your experience and be like, oh my God, I'm, be I'm beyond these ideas I've been thinking for years I have. And then your exploration begins anew. I hope this talk has served you. Much blessings and honesty.